This guitar part's about to have something really nasty happen to it. Let's have a listen. Oh, did you hear it? The dreaded squeak. Let's have a listen again. Luckily, we have this loaded up in Isotopes RX-10. This is like the Swiss army knife of audio repair kits. And we've got this module over here in it called Guitar Denoise. I'll open that now. And I'm just going to leave it at its default settings. I've got Squeak switched on here. And I'll go ahead and I'll click on Render. That's going to fix that for me. I'll close this module down. And let's go to just before that Squeak and have a listen now. And like magic, it's gone. It's very typical of the kind of thing you can do in Isotopes RX. However, this is not a new feature. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to be talking about what's new in RX10. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. I want to start off with the new and very handy Repair Assistant plugin. This is the new built from the ground up repair assistant in RX10. Okay, this is a plugin. It's inserted into a vocal track in my door here. Okay, and that's what I'm going to improve. Let's just have a quick listen to that vocal now. You're always telling me that you're here to stay. Wake up in the so right away, I can hear a few things I want to fix. I want to do some DSing. I want to get rid of some sort of little clicky sounds from the mouth, you know. That kind of thing and I also want to improve upon the plosives so in the plugin here we've got some different modes it's on voice mode at the moment but you can select a musical mode here for for pitched instruments you can select a percussion mode here for things like drums and also a sound effects mode as well of course I'm going to be selecting this voice mode and then I'm just going to click on the learn button and play the track you're always telling me that you're here to stay Wake up in the morning and you've gone away. That, that's what we okay, do. Okay, so we've got some suggestions to start off with. I can see it's turned on the DS uh, module here, okay? And um, we'll have a listen to that in a moment. And we've got some others where there's some settings. It hasn't turned them on, but we can optionally switch them on. So let's have a listen to the S's first of all. You're always telling me that you're here to stay. So always, that that's a little bit harsh still in there. So I'm just going to push that up a bit. Okay, let's have a listen. You're always telling me that you're much, here much to better. Don't go too far with DSing. If you get rid of the S's and, and that kind of thing, it does sound very, very weird. Okay, I think that's okay where it is at the moment. We've just controlled it a little bit. Now, I'm still hearing some clicks in there, some little mouth clicks. Have a listen again. You, you listen carefully for them. You're always telling me that you're here to stay. In that sort of around that here to stay region. OK, so I'm just going to turn on D click here. I'm just going to leave it at its suggested uh, setting there and have a listen now. You're always telling me that you're here to stay. That's absolutely perfect. That's really improved that. Now it has got D reverb switched on. This attempts to sort of get rid of um, any room reflections you might be picking up. It's just got it turned on slightly. Let's see if we can improve that and make this uh, vocal sound really sort of more intimate. You're always telling me that you're here to stay. Wake up in the morning and you've gone away. Now you can definitely go too far with this because you'll start to sort of ruin the high end of the vocal. I think we can get away with it about there. Okay. Now, the final thing I want to fix are the plosives. The plosives are not a part of this plugin, but they are a part of a plugin which is also in RX10. We'll just go over to that. And that's the RXD plosive. Okay. It's actually bypassed at the moment. You can see it here. I'm not going to change any of the settings. I'm just going to turn it on. And let's have a listen for those plosives now. You're always telling me that you're here to stay. Wait. They've almost, I think they've entirely gone, actually. You just bypass this again. Listen for the plosives. You're always telling me that you're on here. On the telling, on the t telling. You're always telling me you hear them? that yep. you're here to stay. Now I'll, I'll switch it back on again. Have a listen. You're always telling me that you're here to stay. Got rid Wait. of it completely. I think that's really overall improved that vocal. It's ready now to go back in the mix and sound like this. You're always telling me that you're here to stay. I wake up in the morning.
By the way, there's three different versions of RX available at different budgets and with different features. So you should check the links in the description down below to find out what's included with each version. This is some audio from an interview I recently did with Micah Christian from Sons of Serendip, and I'm going to use it to test out how well RX-10 copes with multiple speakers. So let's just have a listen to the first few seconds of it. Why did you do it? Why did you suddenly decide to create a vocal library? Yeah, Mike, well, first, thank you for having us. Um... So you can hear both of us are speaking there. I'm going to go ahead and click on this icon, and this is going to start to extract the actual text from the word, as well as try to identify which one of us is speaking at different times. You can see the text has appeared at the top here, and also it's in different colors here for different speakers. Now, Isotope freely admit that this is not perfect at the moment, and it is optimized to American accents okay, so it may not do quite so well on my accent. Let's just click on this text navigation pane here, and we can see it's detected three speakers, okay? We can click on this first one here. So I reckon maybe my accent has confused it slightly, but I can see that that is me there. So I'm just going to double click on that and label that Mike for me. And then this is Micah. So I will just double click on that and label that Micah. So now I can easily identify where each person is speaking. And the beauty is I can now process, this, process these separately. So I could select Micah's voice here and do something I would never do in real life. And that's actually EQ it. He's got a wonderful voice, doesn't need EQing. I've already got an EQ set up here to absolutely destroy the top end of his voice. I'll click on render there and close that. And let's have a listen to my part and then his vocal library. Yeah, Mike, well, first, thank you for having us. And as you can hear, I've totally ruined his voice. Okay, the other thing that we can do is search for specific words and then process those. So, for example, I'm going to look for the word grateful. Okay, you can see it's detected it there. So I'll click on that and you can see it's highlighted an area here. Now, don't worry if you can notice that it's actually not on the word grateful there. That's because we're not zoomed in enough. If we do zoom in, then we will see that the word grateful is being selected there and we can process that grateful. all by itself. This tool, I don't think is perfect. And as I say, they freely admit that they need to work on, you know, different accents and things. But I think it's a great start and really useful for, pe for people who are processing things like podcasts, etc. <laughs> Unfortunately, this recording has some hum on it. Indeed, let's go ahead and at least try and reduce that hum with the de-hum module. I'll show you the way we used to do it in the old versions of RX. You'd go ahead and you would select an area with just the hum and no speaking. Then you would click on learn. Okay, now if we select the whole thing and preview the effect, it sounds like this. Unfortunately, this recording has some hum on it. And that's a great improvement on what we had before, okay? But they've made the process a little bit easier with RX-10. With this version, you can just go ahead and click on the adaptive mode there and just hit render, okay? It's going to go ahead and process it. Let's have a listen to see what the result is. Unfortunately, this recording has some hum on it. So as you can hear, especially in the gaps, things have improved drastically and the process is a lot easier. This is a Zoom recording and the quality is not all that great. And part of the reason it's not that great is because we haven't recorded the full frequency range that we're used to hearing. You can see these big black holes here up above uh, 12K or so. So what we can do in RX-10 is attempt to improve this using something called spectral recovery. Sounds fancy, doesn't it? Well, click on that. Um, now, the idea of this is it tries to sort of rebuild parts of the frequency range which are missing in this recording. So I'm just going to select an area of it here and then click on learn. OK, and you'll see that these two handles are moved in. It's suggesting that it could try to improve um, the low frequencies here below about 100 hertz or so and these high frequencies up here. Now, let's have a listen and kind of see what it would come up with by hitting preview. This is a Zoom recording and the... Okay, that's not bad. It's added in a fair amount of low end in there, but I'll add a little bit more. I think it's a little harsh on the top end. Um, so what I'm going to do is just turn this gain down just a tad here. 
So we've got two gain controls either side. One is for the low end fixes, one for the high end fixes. Let's have a listen again. This is a zoom recording and the... So you can hear the difference between the two parts there. If I go ahead and render this, it'll just take a moment or two, and I'll just get rid of all this. You can see that it's added information up here, and you can see a little bit down the low end as well here. So it's attempted to rebuild those frequency areas. I would recommend you would play with this for a little bit more, more than I have, just to refine it a little bit, but a pretty good tool for improving those sort of scratchy recordings if you're forced to use them. Now there's quite a lot to learn about RX-10 and Isotope tell me that with the final release, there's gonna be a full tour in there for people new to RX, really, really handy. And talking of Isotope, they also of course make one of the most well-known pieces of software for music mastering. In fact, I don't know many producers who don't rave about it. I am of course talking about Isotope's Ozone. And to find out why exactly it is so fantastic, you should watch the video on the other side of this logo, and I'll tell you all about it.